Hello East Texas, I'm Craig DeLisi. I'm a family physician here in Mount Pleasant. All right, so why are vaccinated people getting COVID? Does that mean the vaccine does not work? It's a great question. Um, we call cases in vaccinated people breakthrough cases. The, the, the term itself seems to imply a failure on the part of the vaccine. Um, but you need to understand that no vaccine is 100% uh, effective at preventing infection. Uh, most vaccines' jobs are to prevent serious infection uh, or, or death. Um, and also realizing that if something is not 100% effective, that means that there's a statistical percentage of people who are going to obtain it when they're exposed. Uh, I was talking to someone about measles the other day. Nationally, we probably have a 90, 95% measles uh, vaccination rate. Measles is very contagious. We hardly ever see measles in the United States because of it. <clears throat> Part of that is because if one person had measles, say they brought it over from Africa or another country, and they ended up in a community, almost everyone they'd be around would have the vaccine. So it would spread. Uh, in the case uh, of this Delta COVID, unfortunately, we're seeing so many cases that uh, because of that, we are seeing a spread. So for the measles analogy, if we imported 10,000 people with measles into a given city and dropped them in, even if the vaccine rate was uh, 85 or 90 percent, and it's a good vaccine, it's probably a 90 percent effective vaccine, we would see lots and lots of new cases because there'd be 10 percent, 5 percent of the population that would still catch it, and then it would spread. And so really we're just dealing with raw numbers here. So it's not surprising to any of us that we're seeing people catch the virus who, uh, who have had the vaccine. The Delta variant is very contagious, and this is why, uh, this is one of the main reasons that we're seeing the spread like we are, including to vaccinated people. This slide here demonstrates um, what we call the reproduction rate or the R naught of a virus. And so on the left, we have a person who was infected with the original strain, um, and on average, one person would infect two probably 2.3 to 2.5 other people. That, that's on par with a lot of old, older viruses. I mean, a lot of viruses like influenza. On the right, we have what we're seeing with the Delta surge, which is that one person on average is infecting five to nine people. That is profound. And so you can see how quickly it can spread, you know, from one person to six or seven people to you know, 50 people, and then, and then you know, it spreads exponentially like that. And, and this, this slide here is showing uh, also uh, another way of looking at how contagious it is just relative to other strains. So on that little pink box on the left is the original strain. Um, the, the bottom line, uh, the x-axis is showing us the, how uh, contagious something is. So as you go further to the right, that means it's more contagious. Uh, as you go up, it's it's more serious illness. So it's basically showing that that Delta variant, that blue box, is more contagious than almost every virus we've ever seen in humans other than measles. Um, so we're talking about something that's as or more contagious than chickenpox. Um, it's more contagious than flu. It's much more contagious than the last version of COVID. It's more contagious than SARS and Ebola and smallpox. And so, so this virus is a... Uh, uh, is extremely contagious. Now, um, it's important to know that the vaccine is still very effective against serious infection. Um, and when I say serious infection, I typically mean pneumonia, which is what leads to hospitalization and death. And uh, these slides represent that. And they're showing the incidence rates in vaccinated and non-vaccinated people for the different things. So the, 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 the graph on the top left is showing that just pure infections, uh, vaccinated people are getting them all have about an 88% reduction uh, in infections. So you have about an eight times greater chance of being infected if you're unvaccinated than if you're vaccinated. More importantly though, in hospitalizations and in deaths, uh, it's about a 96% reduction, meaning that you have about a 25 <clears throat> times less likely chance of ending up in the hospital or dying uh, if you're vaccinated versus unvaccinated. And, and that's exactly what we're seeing. So in, in, our, in, the, in the clinic where I work, we have, uh, we're seeing quite a few positives a day, you know, 20, 25 people a day, and roughly 10 to 20% of those people have been vaccinated. In the hospital, however, 
we're seeing almost none that have been vaccinated. And to me, that is one of the most important things that people need to hear who are considering the vaccine, who haven't yet gotten it, is not that all these people who are catching COVID, that it means the vaccine's a failure and it doesn't work and what's the point, but what they need to hear is that the vaccinated people, by and large, are not getting pneumonia. They're not getting hospitalized. They're not dying. I'm not saying it's not happening at all. It's happening in, in small numbers, extremely small numbers, and relative to what we're seeing, it's almost inconsequential. It's so small. So, so the vaccine is, the vaccine is working. It's doing a fantastic job. And, and then, and then one reason, and just real briefly, is you know, I think it's important to know, is because of the difference between mucosal and systemic immunity. So the reason that we're that people who are vaccinated are still susceptible somewhat, is when we're given a vaccine, this particular vaccine, anything that goes in the bloodstream, it induces an antibody response in our blood, in our in our system. Well, the virus, when we're exposed to it, comes in through the nose, which is one reason masking is helpful. And we have different antibodies in our nose than we do in our bloodstream. We have we have immunoglobulin A primarily in our mucosa. Uh, in our bloodstream, we have mainly IgG and IgM. And so the the vaccine does not really uh, give us much protection in the mucosa. The levels of, of the IgA antibodies are not very high, so it means you can get infected. But what typically happens then is that people with it um, don't get as ill systemically because as soon as the virus gets into the bloodstream and starts to replicate, we do have lots of antibodies that fight it. So I, I showed that slide showing that people, how people pass it, that's true, and vaccinated people who get infected are contagious. But typically they're contagious much less longer because we clear the virus a lot quicker. And so, so that's an important distinction. It makes some sense. It's why some vaccines traditionally have been given intranasally. And there's even thought for the COVID vaccine, maybe doing a nasal spray. I could see that coming at some point. But, um, but that's something that you, you may hear about that I did want to clarify.